This is lecture number 26, focused on China, in my recent ongoing work with Professor Si Chi Zhong of Tsinghua University. This wordy title, Does Government Investment in Local Public Goods Spur Gentrification and New Residential Real Estate Investment? Evidence from Beijing. So we all know that China's booming and that China's uh, powerful government has been making enormous investments ranging from bullet trains, something I'll be talking about in later lectures, to new highways, to new airports. But within cities, within many, all of China's cities, including Beijing, major investments have taken place to transform the urban form. And in this empirical paper, Si Chi and I are focused on the consequences of two major expensive public investment projects, the new subway lines being built in Beijing and the construction of the Olympic Village that was so prominent in the 2008 Olympics. And if you use YouTube, you can find it everywhere. What we're interested in is this complementarity question. When the, pub, when the government commits to a big push of improving urban infrastructure, how does the private sector respond? Complementarity would mean that when the public sector raises its investments, that the private sector, sort of matching pennies, it increases its investments in investments such as, uh, as we're going to study, new restaurants and new housing towers. We're also going to study the pricing implications. If, if you own land near where a new subway is built, uh, how much richer are you? And we're always interested in social justice issues and in inequality. Could the urban poor be made worse off by these public investments? Uh, who bears the incidence of these public investments? Who wins? Who loses? Or does everyone win? So between the years 2000 and 2009, Beijing, in Beijing, four new subways were built, and this cost about $7 billion in U.S. dollars, or $50 billion RMB. A fortune was also spent to build the Olympic Village. So in this project, we're studying very big ticket items. Here's a map of Beijing. You see a, that star, that's Tiananmen Square, and you see the ring roads uh, in concentric circles around the city. You're supposed to see the Olympic Village, that uh, Pentagon, to the north of Beijing, and you're supposed to see the new subway lines in blue. You see the old subway lines in red, and you see the new subway lines. And we're interested in the consequences, the spatial impacts of these investments. And you can immediately see that areas to the north of Beijing had a greater investment. Uh, you see both the Olympic Village to the north, and you see the subway lines, which hadn't been there before. And so there's questions in the absence of subway lines. How did people in the north of Beijing get to the city center? With relatively few cars, it would be a long bike or motorcycle ride or using buses on congested roads rather than using faster subway technology. And here's a transformative picture. You're supposed to see Beijing before, to the left, and, and after with the construction of the Olympic Village. And um, these photos are what they are. I'll leave it to you. But I think we all sense that the Olympic Village was progress. I've been told that there was farming going on in the area that would become the Olympic Village before the Olympics. So here is a map of land sales. A, the purpose of this map is to show you some of the data we've been able to obtain because of Tsinghua University's excellent ties uh, to different data authorities in China. So we have geocoded many different data sets that allow us to do the analysis we do in this paper. And this paper is forthcoming in real estate economics. And we're proud of this paper. We also take a look in this paper at new housing production between the years 2006 and 2008. These pre-sales of apartment housing towers. And you can see uh, the, the patterns of where housing projects are going up relative to where our different parts of the city and relative to where the subway and the Olympic Village is. Look at the Olympic Village and look at that large number of new housing towers just to the west of the Olympic Village. Quite a coincidence. We also in this paper geocode where all these new restaurants have opened in the city whether it's Chinese restaurants or Western restaurants. And to give you a flavor of these restaurants, no pun intended, 
Here's a list of the restaurants, prestigious ones like Starbucks and not so prestigious ones like McDonald's and KFC, Western restaurants, and Chinese restaurants like uh, Lulu Restaurant or Dong Lei Shun. I don't believe I've ever been there. We're going to count the, the number of these specific restaurants that open in a vicinity of new subway stops and near the Olympic Village as evidence to test the hypothesis that when the government invests in public infrastructure, that the private sector in China responds to such investments and in, increases its own investment. And this is sort of how you set off a snowball of a booming part of the city. And we see this in, in the United States also. There's the presumption when a new sports stadium is built, whether it's the, where the Brooklyn Nets are now playing, that you're going to see shopping malls and restaurants and bars locate nearby, this sort of emergent consumer city in a neighborhood. This type of logic is often engaged in by project boosters. Some economists have asked whether this spending at those bars is actually new spending or it's a zero-sum game that the, those same dollars would have been spent somewhere else in the city had that stadium not been built. Our paper doesn't delve into that. We present five pieces of evidence in our real estate economics paper. We study the price of land near the new Olympic Village and subways. We studied the prices of, of apartments per square foot, the pricing of apartments near the Olympic Village and near the new subways. We count the number of housing towers and apartments that real estate developers are selling. We count new restaurants and Beijing can be partitioned into these zones. We study gentrification. Is there rising education and income attainment for those in the zone and has that increased over time relative to a control group? Our treatment group are those geographic areas near the Olympic Village and near the new subway stops. Our control group are areas a further from the infrastructure and also in the pretreatment period uh, before the infrastructure is built, the same geographic areas but before the, this infrastructure was in place. Our major findings. All else equal, land prices decline with distance from the new subway stops. Home prices decline with distance from the Olympic Village and the new subway stops. Real estate developers are building more housing closer to the Olympic Village and the new subway stops, but not the old subway stops. By old subway stops, I mean subway stops that existed before 2006. New restaurants are opening near the two pieces of infrastructure, that infrastructure being the Olympic Village and the subways. And we do see this gentrification based on this 114 zones. Education is rising by an income are rising by a larger amount near the new government infrastructure than in other parts of the city. We recognize in our research that uh, we don't have micro data of studying individuals, uh, but uh, we've done the best we could with the data we have.